Hey guys, it's Breivort. The first release candidate for 1.20.3 is out, and that means that 1.20.3 is expected to come out sometime this week. So let's get right into everything that's coming in 1.20.3. First things first, decorated pots can now store up to one stack of items. There's no UI for this, so you just have to kind of keep track of how many you put in. And once they're filled up, it won't let you put any more items in, and it won't let you put other types of items in as well as the first type that's put in. And at the moment, destroying them is the only way to get the items out. And along with this, there's a new game rule. Projectiles can break blocks. If we set it to false, it makes it so we can't break uh, decorated pots with projectiles anymore. And it also makes it so coarse flowers and pointed dripstone can't be broken with projectiles. Shields have been buffed, so you can block things that are coming from straight above you now, um, which wasn't the case before. And the animation for holding a shield in third person mode has been changed. There's a new game rule, Max Command Fork Count, which changes the amount of command forks that can be generated per tick. By default, is set to 65,536. So what that does is, if I go ahead and run this command, it will make it so every entity in the world says hi to me. So what happens if I set this to a number that's too low? Well, then it seems to just fail the command altogether. There have also been two other game rules added. Player's Nether Portal Creative Delay and Player's Nether Portal Default Delay, which change the length of time that it takes to go through a Nether Portal in Creative and Survival Mode, respectively. So if I have the Default Delay set to 1 and we're in Survival Mode, we can now travel through instantly. It didn't seem to be instant just because there's a little bit of lag there, but uh, there we go. And if we set the Creative Delay to 80, we can make it so it takes the same amount of time as it normally does in Survival Mode to go through a Portal in Creative Mode. And this is measured in game ticks, so 80 corresponds to 4 seconds. Speaking of game ticks, we now have the tick command, which allows us to do things like this. This will make it so I can freeze the game in time and make it so you do like floating gravel and we could do like floating mobs and stuff. So let's spawn a squid up here. There we go. And when we're ready, we can unfreeze the game and all the things will fall. We can also customize the tick rate, so let's say we want to set it to a quarter the speed of normal. Oh my goodness, that is so slow. Let's actually switch to spectator mode so it's a little bit more, so I can travel a little bit more quickly. Uh, and as you can see, the game is running really slowly now. It still is running. If we switch to creative mode, we could place gravel down. It will slowly fall. Oh my goodness, things are so slow. And now they are starting to die, but very, very slowly. We can also make the game run super duper fast. So I set the tick rate to be a thousand and you can see the mobs are just kind of zipping around these cliffs up here. And there is now a setting to hide splash texts, which can be found in the accessibility menu. For a long time, there was a bug in the game that would miscalculate the amount of overflow of repairing items when you had mending on multiple pieces of gear, which made it so you'd be able to repair multiple things with a small amount of XP. This is uh, going to give me 50 points of XP here. I just do that, and you'll see now it only repairs one, whereas in 1.20.2, it would repair both of them. So this means that mending has been nerfed in 1.20.3. Custom names for minecarts and boats now display in the world, and the death message for getting shot by custom named arrows will now display the name of the arrow. The model of bats has been updated, and you can now put bats inside of decorated pots. The single high grass has been renamed to short grass, which means it's also renamed when it comes to using it in commands. This change will make it so you won't accidentally fill an area with grass when you're trying to fill it with grass blocks. And ender pearls now make a teleportation noise on impact. And some added customizability has been added to scoreboard objectives. So you can now do some special things with the displays, such as make the text bold or change the color of it. The 1.21 data pack has been added, which you can now toggle at the beginning of creating a world. And it is separate from the villagers trade rebalance. And if you enable this at the start of a world, you're able to access things like the crafter, the new copper variants and the new tough variants. In addition, it'll also allow you access to the trial chambers as well as the breeze mob. I'm not going to go into all the details about the copper and tough blocks or the trial chamber and the breeze. I've already done a full playthrough of a trial chamber though on my channel and you're free to check that out if you'd like as well as snapshot videos covering the new copper and tough blocks. 
Anyways, guys, that is about it for this one. So if you've enjoyed, make sure to leave a like. And if you ever want to see me again, hit the subscribe button so you won't miss out on the next snapshot. I'll see you guys. Take care. Have yourselves an amazing day. Calcium Capus Modem Tardum and goodbye.